In this lecture, we're going to go over um, the uh, concept of Mohr's circle, but before we do that, um, what I want to do is just give a brief recap on what we've learned already uh, about stress transformations. And as we'll find out, Mohr's circle is a way that we can um, sort of use a, a graphical method uh, to enable us to do these stress transformations. So uh, really what we started with was this concept of plane stress. And with plane stress, uh, it was simply uh, really what we're used to with, you know, uh, for, for beams uh, as we've been uh, uh, working with on, you know, either bending stress or shear stress through the course is that uh, we only have stress on uh, two of the three uh, faces. Um, so, you know, for, for here, we've got stress in the, uh, in the x direction and the y direction, uh, but we have nothing in the, the z. Uh, so let me just write that in the uh, in the z direction there. Um, so we we've got one one direction where there's zero stress, and that's the definition of plane stress. Um, we then learned uh, that you know for for plane stress, if we want to you know uh, really find out what is our um, uh, well, we we looked at you know say uh, the difference between sort of these you know stresses in, in x and, and y. Um, but, you know, that's, that's only so useful for us because uh, materials really break in, in tension or compression or shear. Uh, they don't break in, in X stress or Y stress. So we need to have some means to uh, transform uh, the stress state uh, to find out, well, what are our, our maximum and minimum um, normal stresses and our, our maximum uh, shear stress. And, um, and so we, we went through that and we found out that you know, for uh, when we've got our maximum uh, normal stresses, those are called our principal stresses. Uh, the angle that that occurs in is called the principal plane. And uh, in the stress state, there is no shear. It's only uh, only tension and compression, only, only stress is acting normal to the surface. Um, and then uh, when we've got max shear stress, uh, the normal stress which is acting on is really the average between X and Y. Um, and we also found out that... Um, uh, the angle of our principal strain is 45 degrees away from the uh, angle at which our maximum shear stress occurs. Um, and, and how do we learn all of that? Well, we learn that with a, a whole series uh, of equations, uh, equations which, uh, you know, look like this. So there, there's lots of, um, so we, we can work out our, our principal stresses uh, with this one. We can work out our maximum shear stresses with this one. Uh, some things to note, again, uh, if we work through the mass, math, again, we found that uh, at our principal stresses, uh, we had no shear stress. Uh, also, we found that, you know, for uh, our maximum shear stress, if you work out, you know, say, uh, sigma 1, which is all of you know, this, plus uh, what's under the radical, um, minus sigma 2, which is this, minus what's under the radical, and divide all of that by 2, you find out that also is uh, equal to tau max. And so uh, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, and then we, we also found out that, you know, with, with uh, these equations that uh, at our maximum shear stress, um, the normal stress is just the average of our x and our y. Um, but, you know, as I said, these, these equations are, are you know, useful if we've got uh, a computer or we're, we're programming something uh, but for you know our everyday use, they kind of stink. Uh, they're they're uh, they're they're kind of um, you know difficult to use. There's a, there's a lot of terms, um, and we want to find out. Well, is there is there an easier way? Um, as engineers, we like uh, quick methods, which uh, we can do by hand, um, and you know one so that we can. Uh, we can quickly, uh, you know, estimate sizes and, and if uh, our uh, material will fail or not, um, as well as we've got, we need a means to be able to check our, our computations uh, if, if we do use a computer. So uh, we, we want to build a, a healthy, um, you know, skepticism uh, of, of any, um, you know, uh, computation that we do because we can make an error and, and it can be garbage in, garbage out. So, um, you know, there, is, there, is there an easier way to find out, you know, the, these, these stresses at which, you know, the material is actually going to fail 
um, be it in, in, in tension and compression or in shear, uh, other than here. And, well, you know, spoiler is, uh, yes, yes, there is. Uh, and it's called Moore's Circle. So Moore's Circle uh, was developed by uh, uh, this man, Christian Otto Moore. Uh, he was a German engineer um, in the 19th century. And so they didn't have a lot of, they didn't have computers in the 1800s. So he came up with, um, with this. And if, if you look at all of these equations and you do a bit more uh, algebra and some a bit more rearranging, uh, you find out that actually they describe a circle in uh, sigma tau space. So it looks something uh, like this. So instead of x and y, well now our, our coordinate system is um, sigma for our normal stress and uh, tau for our shear stress. Um, and um, all of these equations, you know, draw out this circle. Well, that's that's kind of nice, and, and I've, I've written the sign convention over here for, you know, in, in sigma, tension uh, is positive, so this is the, uh, the tension side over here, and this is the compression side over there. Um, and then shear, it, it's, uh, you know, based upon, you know, what face you're looking at. Uh, if it makes the little block want to spin clockwise, it's positive, it wants to spin uh, anti-clockwise, it's negative. <clears throat> and then uh, the final thing is that all of the angles around here are, um, are 2 theta, and, and that's really because of um, the, you know, this relationship of, of tan 2 theta for our uh, principal axes. So, all right, well, that's a, that's a circle. Is that... Uh, uh, have, how, how is this useful uh, to us, Lucas? Well, uh, that's what we're going to work through. So I've already plotted out um, our location of sigma 1 and sigma 2. And it's along where we have zero shear stress. So think about this circle really as plotting out uh, a stress state. So as we rotate um, this little block around, uh, what the state of stress either in uh, you know, normal uh, and shear, well, we, we plot that around this circle. Uh, and then the angle that we translate uh, is, uh, is two uh, times that angle in here. So the first two that we're looking at are really these, uh, these principal stresses. So this is where uh, we have our maximum and our minimum uh, normal stress. So just here. Um, and we have zero shear stress. So if I'm going to plot uh, the stress state um, uh, at this phase, at sigma 1, uh, and tau equal to zero, uh, well, that's sigma 1. I would go over and plot tau equal to zero. And similarly here, uh, sigma 2 and uh, tau equal to uh, zero. So just there. All right, well, that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, well, what, el what other relationships do we have? Uh, well, if we, we look at um, tau max, well, tau max is going to be equivalent to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 uh, divided by 2. So that's really just this uh, average here. And, um, well, and that's, that's kind of what we see uh, on the stress state. Well, our, our, uh, our, <clears throat> our average is, is, uh, is going to be uh, average... Um, uh, st normal stress is, is going to be uh, what a normal stress when we have our our maximum shear. So we know our maximum shear if we come and plot that up here. Well, that's going to be tau max, and, and right here in the middle um, is sigma average. And keep in mind that this sigma average is going to be the average. You know, really of any of these two points as we, we move along the circle. Because if we've got a plot point here and a point here, well, the average, uh, think of it like the x uh, distance, is going to be halfway in between. So on a circle, uh, the average uh, you know, of any point, 180 degrees, is always uh, right there in the middle. So, um, well, this is, this is also kind of a neat thing. Uh, let's see 
uh, what else what else can we see just from from these equations uh, and how the circle is plotted out well um, you know we have that uh, you know the uh, angle of our principal axis is 45 degrees away from the angle of our maximum shear so you know this is you know the angle of our principal axis uh, to uh, maximum shear well if it's a circle this is 90 degrees but as I said over here uh, because we're plotting everything in this sort of two theta uh, world, you know, all of our angles are doubled. So this distance here is two theta, and you know, from uh, here to the top, well, that's that's ninety degrees. Ninety uh, equals two theta, and um, well, that's if, if we divide up by two, we get 45. So everything's still kind of, um, you know, coming together with how we, we've worked out the math. Um, and then the last thing we want to look at is if we, well, we've got a circle. Well, we know the, the center of our circle is going to be at uh, sigma average. And we know two points here uh, along the sort of, you know, tau equals zero. Well, the other important thing we want to know with a circle is its radius. And this radius, well, it's going to be the same distance as, you know, here to here. Um, or here to here, which is really tau average. So radius equals sigma 1 plus sigma 2 divided by 2. And those are some really nice relationships with this, you know, and, and and we've done we've done no math here uh, other than um, we we've gone back and we've uh, essentially you know using these relationships we've just plotted up some stress states that we know and this has been relatively quick um, but you know, the the question is well how do we you know this is this is all well and good if if you're already given sigma one sigma two um, but we're we're given states that look like this with some you know generic. Uh, stress in the x, some in the y, some in the tau, and then you know we work through all these equations to find out what sigma one, sigma two, and, and tau max are. So how do we do that with uh, this circle? And I think that's probably best uh, done with an example. So uh, let's draw up this example. So let's say we've got a, uh, a stress state. I'm just going to give a um, just some some arbitrary uh, stress state here. So we've got 60 MPa, 60 MPa, one hundred MPa, and we'll put some coordinates up here. Uh, we'll just have our uh, typical x and y. So sigma y equals 60 MPa, sigma x equals 100. And let's do a, a shear stress tau equals 48 MPa. So that's, um, that's what we're going to start with. Now, um, really what we want to do is if we go back to the circle, well, we want to plot these faces uh, along the circle, and then we can use geometry to work out what these points are and what the angles are between them. Um, so, uh, doing that, let's grab our... Uh, put some coordinates up here. And... Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and freehand all of this just to show you that you you don't need a compass uh, in order to do this. Uh, really, uh, so it's it's more circle, uh, but uh, really this is this is all going to uh, take advantage of some nice uh, trigon trigonometric uh, functions. So uh, as I said, the first thing we want to do is we want to um, you know plot the stress state um, of different
different faces in sigma tau space. So if this is our sigma and this is the tau, well, the first thing we want to do is well, let's plot uh, what the stress is in um, on on this face here. So um, think about this uh, analogous to x and y, but instead of x, we've got sigma, and instead of y, we've got tau. So you know this stress state uh, is really just going to get represented as a a point here, and it's going to be a point um, going along the sigma axis, 100 MPa and then going along the tau axis going up uh, 48 MPa. And so I know this is going up uh, because based on the sign convention, uh, this tau wants to spin this block um, uh, clockwise while um, the uh, sigma is in tension. So what we do is we'll just put a little dot here and that's going to be you know, at 100 MPa, uh, comma 48 MPa. So, <clears throat> the way, as I say, we we put our uh, point of 100 MPa uh, in the and that's in the sigma uh, direction and uh, uh, 48 MPa in the tau direction. So that's our uh, our first point. Now if we go to an orthogonal face, uh, well we've got um, 60 MPa and uh, 48 MP, uh, in our uh, along the um, uh, sigma direction. So say we have a uh, you know, 60, so that's our, our 100. So we've got a, a 60 and then 48, and because it wants to spin the block uh, anti-clockwise, uh, just like here, uh, well then we know that that's a, a negative, and so it'll get plotted um, down here. So uh, that's going to be our 60 MPa negative 48 MPa is that dot there. All right, well, in order to get the circle, well, we need to find the center of the circle. We saw up here that the center of the circle is going to be at sigma average. So um, in order to find that, let's, uh, let's just find the average between the two sigmas that we have. Um, so sigma av uh, just equals 100 plus 60 divided by 2. Our average equals 80 MPa. So if we come right here in the middle, sigma average equals 80 MPa. All right, well, now we, we have the center of the circle. In order to get the rest of the circle, we need to get our radius. And the um, easiest way to think about that is if we draw a line uh, between these freehand, so it's not uh, quite straight. Um, but we know that this dot sits on the edge of the circle. So if we had it here, it would sit somewhere up you know, here, and then we'd have... Uh, the other one sitting down there. And so we know it sits on the edge of the circle, so it has to be a distance uh, of the radius away from the center. Well, uh, the radius here, uh, we either can use that to find sigma 1 or sigma 2, uh, but we don't have sigma 1 and sigma 2, so how else are we going to find the radius? And this is where we can use some uh, really uh, straightforward um, geometry. Well, we know uh, the distance that uh, this uh, point is up from here, uh, from, from the sigma axis, and really what we have is a nice right triangle. And uh, that right triangle looks like this, where if this point 
is the uh, you know, 148, well, we know that height is going to be uh, 48 uh, MPa uh, above the, uh, the axis here. Uh, we know this distance is just going to be uh, 100 minus sigma av. And we found sigma average is, is 80, so 100 minus 80, uh, that's going to equal 20 MPa. And then so all that's left to find is this distance r. And that's quite simply, so if r equals tau max, uh, that equals just this side squared plus this side squared, and then you take the square root of all of that. Uh, so 20 squared plus 48 squared, take the square root, we get tau max, and we'll just show that it's also still equal to r, uh, equals 52 MPa. So now we, we've got a, a number of, of points. So we can, uh, we know at 52 MPa, uh, right at sigma average, we have tau max equal to 52 MPa. And similarly, we'll have that uh, uh, down here on the bottom, 52 MPa. And then uh, because this is the radius, well, if we translate, if we just add uh, the radius to sigma average, well, we'll get sigma 1 and uh, sigma 2. So sigma 1, so sigma 1 equals sigma average plus r, uh, that just equals 80 MPa plus 52 MPa. Sigma 1 equals 132 MPa. Uh, sigma 2 just equals uh, the uh, average stress um, minus R, uh, to go backwards, minus R equals 80 minus 52. Sigma 2 equals 28 MPa. And just remember that uh, just by convention, uh, these are both the principal axi uh, principal stresses, and sigma 2 is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the smaller of the two. So if we've got sigma 1 equals 132, sigma 2 equals 28, and then I'll try to freehand this as, uh, as best I can. I think I'm going to end up with more of a, an egg shape. Um, but the circle itself matters less. It's these values uh, that we care about, but it's the fact that they trace out a circle is what we are uh, we're taking advantage. But so you can see quite quickly uh, with, with no crazy uh, equations or or uh, or any uh, you know really big you know, trig identities, we found the average stress, the max shear stress, uh, and then our principal stresses all from just a single stress state. So the only thing that's really left is for us to find out, well, what is this angle uh, that we have to rotate this block to either get to the uh, principal stresses, so this is going to be, you know, 2 theta pi, or uh, to go up to the uh, the maximum shear stress. So let's uh, let's work that out, and then we've we've figured out what the uh, the principal stresses are from from this uh, this stress state here, all working with just more circle. So to the angle of the 
principal plane, uh, all that's really left again is is some really uh, straightforward geometry and, and some some basic uh, some basic trig. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just plot uh, kind of you know this coordinate this coordinate here of of the circle and really just um, the uh, the triangle uh, which forms. So uh, we've already we've already worked out you know this triangle here and remember this is two theta p. Uh, this triangle is just this one. So I'll redraw this one and we can work out uh, what this angle is. So we've got. Uh, we we worked out this distance was uh, 20. Uh, this distance is 48. So a, a little bit of a poor drawing on on my part. And remember that this point was at you know, 148. Uh, this is 2 theta p, and you know we've got tau max up top. And this is 2 theta s. Um, and remember that we, this is all just laying on the, uh, you know, principal axis of theta one, uh, sigma one, and sigma two, and you've got sigma average there. So, um, in order to find out these angles, well, let's just take, you know, we know that the tangent of two theta p uh, is just going to be forty-eight. Uh, divided by 20. So 2 theta p uh, equals 67.4 degrees. Theta p equals 33.7 degrees. Uh, and that's rotating clockwise. Um, if we want to find out, you know, what theta s is, well, we know that 90 plus 2 theta s plus 2 theta p um, equals 0. So um, that's the same as, well, actually, let's do it this way. Uh, we know that 90 degrees, this, this angle here, is going to be uh, 2 theta s plus 2 theta p. Um, so we can work out 90 equals 2 theta s plus two times 33.7. And if we work all of that out, we get theta s equals 11.3 degrees counterclockwise. Um, and that's the same as uh, we could go uh, 90 degrees uh, from that uh, because, you know, we've got the, the four sides there. And, uh, and that's really it. So that's, uh, again, relatively quick. Uh, way to find out, you know, principal stresses and, and the angles at which they occur. And so uh, just for completeness, let's just draw up, you know, what the stress state looks like that we, we found from, from this Mohr circle. So this is what we've started with. And then um, from that, we found that our principal stresses uh, is going to be at a, an angle of 33.7 degrees and if we rotate that through uh, we get sigma 1 equals 132 MPA uh, sigma 2 equals 28 MPA 132 28 and that's our That's our principal stresses, and then our uh, max shear stress. Uh, is going to occur uh, at 11.3 degrees, and that's going to be
52 MPa, as that's what we found right here. That's the, the radius, and that's uh, tau max. Uh, 52 MPa. 52 MPa, that's tau max. And the normal stress uh, at that location is going to be sigma average equal to 80 MPa, 80, 80, 80. Um, and you can see that, you know, here and here. Uh, so, uh, and that's our, our maximum. shear stress. So as you can see, uh, Morse circle is a really effective, fairly quick tool to go from a, a, gen, a, a stress state um, from, a, from sort of XY coordinate loadings to, to finding out what our, our principal stresses and our, our maximum shear stresses are. Um, really just using very basic geometry and uh, much, much easier than using these, these big uh, equations like this. And so that means that we can, uh, we can take advantage of this and, and um, uh, quickly look at what these stress states are and then compare them to failure criterion uh, and to determine whether a material is going to uh, break under a certain load or not. And so that's what we're going, that's ultimately what we're, we're working for uh, when we're doing this Mohr circle. So that concludes uh, this lecture on Mohr circle. Uh, I hope you found it uh, useful. It's a really elegant tool. Um, I quite like it. And um, yeah, it's going to become really useful when we start looking at these failure criteria. So with that, thank you very much.